welcome back. And in this video, I want to talk about something called persistence. And what is persistence? Well, persistence is a module that allows us to stay on the target machine even after the target machine gets rebooted. So it is essentially adding our payload to the startup folders where it will automatically get started as soon as the target system gets restarted. It is a part of maintaining access. So this is one of the things that we want to do as soon as we get on the target machine. So what I did right here is I established a interpreter session with the target machine. I used this module to bypass UAC and get system privileges on my Windows 10 virtual machine. And the reason why I'm testing this on a virtual machine is because in this video I will have to restart this machine to see whether the persistence is working. And how I transferred the shell.txt to the Windows 10? Well, I used the cool way of transferring it using the Apache 2 web server. And to do that, you can simply just type system ctl and then start and then type Apache 2. This will ask you for your password, input it right here, and this will start the Apache 2 web server. Now what you can do is you can open up Internet Explorer on the target machine and type in the IP address of your Cal Linux, which will lead you to the web page of our Cal Linux machine. Now you will not see this shell.txt right there. It is there because I put the payload inside of the web server directory. And to do that inside of your Cal Linux, after you create the payload, you can navigate to the slash var slash www and slash html directory where you should have two files called index and then dot something. You can delete those files and you can copy your payload to this html directory right here. Then if you go to your Windows 10 machine, refresh the page, you will have your shell.exe available to download on your Windows 10 machine. Just make sure that you disable the Windows Defender on your Windows 10 machine because we are using a regular Meterpreter reverse TCP shell and it gets detected by Windows Defender. So after you do all of that and establish the connection, you can then gain system privileges and we already know how to do that. We simply just test a bunch of those modules that are used to bypass UAC and then we become the system level account. Once you do all of that, it is time to run the persistence module. So how can we do that? Well, first of all, I will background this session. And if I type sessions, you can see I have two sessions available. The one is on the regular user account and the one is that I elevated, which is this system level account. So what I want to do to run the persistence is I can type this search persistence inside of my Metasploit framework. This will output me with a bunch of different modules. And the one that we're going to cover in this video is going to be this one right here. Exploit, Windows, Local, and then Persistence Service. If I copy the module name, go down here and type Use, paste the module, press Enter. It will set my payload to Windows Meterpreter Reverse TCP. And if I type Show Info, here we can see that this module would generate and upload an executable to a remote host. Next, it will make a persistent service. It will create a new service, which will start the payload whenever the service is running. Admin or system privilege is required for this module to run. That is why we created a second session with the system privileges. So what we need to specify right here, if I type show options, is we need to set the session. And here we're going to set the session with the system level account. In my case, I believe it is session two. That is correct. And right here, we want to set our payload options. Of course, if you want to, you can set these other options as well, such as retry time. And retry time is simply just the time that shell will retry to connect to if the connection fails. Five seconds is default. Now we can set that to be, for example, 10 seconds. It doesn't have to be five. That would be too quick. And after we do all of that, we can run this module. Press run, and this will open the session three. If I type get user ID, we will be the system level account, but what is special about this session is that it will automatically connect back to us even after the target machine is rebooted. So the target won't need to run this shell.txe after the system is restarted. It will automatically connect back to us again because we ran this persistence module. Let me show you what I mean. 
if in my interpreter session I run the reboot command, press enter, this will start restarting the Windows 10 machine. All of the other sessions will die out because the connection has been closed. If I control C this, exit out of this, type sessions, we will have no active sessions anymore. So what we can do right now is we can type use exploit multi handler, set the correct payload and inside of the show options we want to set the correct options that we used inside of our persistence module and that is the port 4444 and the IP address of our Cal Linux machine. So all I need to do right now is type run and here we get the session open because this machine hasn't yet shut down so we're just going to close this because this is not the session that we wanted to and I'm going to manually exit out of this machine and go and start it once again. Now that the machine is getting started up, I will run our listener and if everything worked correctly, we should get a interpreter session opened as soon as the machine boots up without the target having to do anything but start their machine. So let's see whether it will work. The machine is currently starting up and let's give it a few seconds. And here it is, our interpreter session 5 opened on its own. And notice that it didn't even log in to the user yet. And the best part about this is that if I type get user ID, I will already be system level account. So I don't have to go through the privilege escalation process again. This interpreter session opened without anyone clicking on anything. And that is the good part about persistence. Now, even if the target shut down this PC once again and started it in a week or two, our persistence will still work and our payload will automatically connect back to our Kalinux machine if the IP address of the Kalinux machine hasn't changed, of course. One more thing to keep in mind is that sometimes persistence can be buggy, so it knows not to work sometimes. But in most cases, it should work. And if it doesn't, there are other modules for persistence as well. If I type background and search persistence, I used this module right here. But you can see there are other modules as well. You can check them out if you want to. Maybe they will work better. Maybe they will suit your needs more. But whichever one you find to work, just use it and you will maintain access on the target system. Great. Now that we covered persistence, in the next video, we're going to cover the usage of post exploitation modules and a few more useful commands that we can do after exploiting the target. See you in the next video.